This episode brought to you by Skillshare. Classes taught by expert practitioners for your career or for your passions. The first 500 people who sign up receive a free two-month trial. Wonderful. Bring in the RoboCop script! Reduce the R to a PG-13! But wasn't it being R what sucked people in? Well, yeah, but being PG-13 allows more people to see it, even though more people won't want to see it because it's PG-13. It made more sense when the truck guy said it. For schnizzle. I thought we said no new ideas. Well, we have to do something different or we might as well be a Disney remake. Different scares people. You scare people. So the focus groups tell me. All right. Well, start with new ideas and then never go anywhere with them. That way, everybody loses. Are you sure that's how studios make money? Well, the chart says... Good news. We have Samuel L. Jackson. Perfect. He's going to be an amazing RoboCop. Actually, he's only in for a few minutes. Oh. Well, who do we have to play RoboCop? That boring guy from Suicide Squad. Which, Which one? one? Never mind, just go ahead with it. It's not like the main character ever matters. You're gonna be a money making motherfucker. Oh, oh. Yeah! Yeah! We did it! We finished the Robocop remake! And the chart says this is gonna be our biggest money maker yet! People are totally gonna forget about that first one! <laughs> I am, but not you, because you're gonna be amazing! People are never gonna forget about you! Oh, I forgot about you. We really should put him in storage. Um, hey, when are you guys going to get to making my sequel? Oh, sorry, RoboCop movie, that's not going to happen. Yeah, we're working on how to make money with another Pixar sequel. Good Dinosaur 2? I forgot there was a Good Dinosaur 1. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, come on, there is still potential. Well, critically, you weren't that big a hit, and domestically, you made only a little over half your money back. But 49% on Rotten Tomatoes, that's almost half, and I did good on a worldwide release, just like Alien 3. And Warcraft. Those are the examples you went with. Come on, just think of the Ghostbuster reboot. It tanked. Total Recall reboot. Tanked. Fantastic Four. Lone Ranger. That Tom Cruise mummy movie. This is embarrassing for you. Oh god, how did things go so wrong? <sighs> I guess it was kind of inevitable when you remake something so unique and beloved. Wait, how are you reviewing me if you also somehow made me? You want a segue that makes sense or a review? Whichever doesn't crap on me. They both do. Go. RoboCop was a gigantic 80s hit. It had big action, bloody gore, in-your-face commentary, and somebody losing their job for this effect. The movie was so beloved that years later, Detroit decided to make a RoboCop statue. Holy shit, I'd buy that for a dollar! It was crazy, awesome, crazy awesome, so naturally they had to reboot it. In 2014, the director of Elite Squad gave us a slightly different look at the action icon. It failed to grab audiences and critics, and was forgotten fairly quickly. But looking back, was this a valiant effort that only had a glitch? Or was it a valiant effort that only had... this glitch? You call this a glitch? Well, we're here to take a closer look. Let's try our best to give this movie our cooperation. I set that thing in the movie. That's kind of cool, right? You need to stop. But I... No. You need to stop. I set that thing... This is RoboCop 2014! I said that thing. So let's see how this dark and gritty reboot gets things going. What the fuck was that? RoboCop. This time, he's a pigeon. It turns out this is Samuel L. Jackson doing vocal warm-ups. Let's be honest though, if you want a more fitting Jackson quote to start this movie off, you'd be like, Y'all to be ashamed of your goddamn self. Fuck!
Fuck you! He plays a commentator named Pat Novak, which sounds like a Fox News anchor who got fired for groping too much or not enough. What if I told you that even the worst neighborhood in America could be made completely safe? He's behind a big movement to replace cops and soldiers with machines, as demonstrated with this live takedown in Iran. They're the big boys, they uh, secure the perimeter. It is great to see American machines helping to promote peace and freedom. We're gonna find out what's in your esophagus. But it looks like suicide bombers are ready to take them out. Starting off light, I see. The bombers attack and... Yeah, I'm positive the best way to start this movie off was with... But the original RoboCop was dark and bloody. Yeah, but that was over-the-top criminals and comic book thugs. This is friggin' suicide bombers in the Middle East! I mean, I guess if it ties into the rest of the story, it makes sense, but we never cut back to it. This is the only scene in Iran. So what's the point in showing this disturbing overseas warfare? It's just uncomfortable. Imagine if you were watching the cartoon and they were suddenly like, I should work alone. I do not wish to see Lewis hurt because of me. So you do have feelings for me. It gave me flashbacks to the religious jihadists I had to kill because they claimed countless American lives. If only political strategists could figure out how to wash the blood from my soul. Buy my toys. I would watch that and buy his toys. Kelly! We're okay, Pat. For security reasons, the Pentagon's going to cut our feet. I'll continue to stand by. Yeah, she did. On the one hand, we have Raymond Sellers. Wow, that's amazing. The film's coolness levels went up by 20% by simply putting Michael Keaton and Samuel Jackson on the same screen. But what do you expect when they come from this kit? So we cut to our main character, Murphy, played by Joe Kinman. At least I think it's him. It's hard to tell with the camera shaking so much. No, it's nothing personal. He's gotta be dumb or dirty. <laughs> Maybe if you hadn't gone off the reservation, your partner'd still be standing. Robocam. This time, it's without a tripod. And I can't really tell. Has he become the emotionless robot yet? It's me and Jack, we've been doing some street buys. We got some problems back home with Chicago PD. I'm gonna go hard after Lincoln Daniels. My fault. Shouldn't even have been there. Douche. It's not like the original Murphy was Robert D. Friggin' Nero. There is some truth to that. The idea behind Murphy in the first one is we saw him mostly as the machine and we found out more about his connection to his family as it moved on. It created a little bit of a mystery to his humanity, revealing how soft and sentimental he really was. Yes, in my version, you see him with the family early on. And you suck at it. Only from every conceivable angle. In this version, the scenes with him and the family are boring as sin. There's no playfulness, no energy, no joking around. He's just the same overly serious stick in the mud as in all the other scenes. This was a chance to really add to his personal life, really explore his humanity. But you just keep him stiff and bland. Hey guys. Hi Dad. Just because he's like an extra in those street movies Mark Wahlberg does in his spare time doesn't mean he's not deep. Couldn't you have him smile at least once or maybe tell a joke? Okay, how's this for a joke? Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. To get to the pretentious asshole's house? Knock knock. Who's there? The chicken. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just wanted to remind people I was still here. So Keaton plays the head of Omnicorp. Please no accent, please no accent, please no accent. I need to give Americans a product they can love. Oh, thank Christ. As his analyst tries to work out a way to win the government and the public over to expand their machines. Though with Jay Barrett show in the role, it sounds like they're trying to figure out how to save DreamWorks animation. My team have come up with a pretty aggressive new campaign. It's not another how to train your dragon, is it? How to, of course not. They want a product. The conscience. I'm sorry, I can't hear a thing over your paintings. How am I supposed to not focus on that? Can I even show those on YouTube? We're gonna put a man inside a machine. They decide to add a human touch. Boy, are you in the wrong film for that. As they go to a doctor who specializes in robotic limbs for amputees. Commissioner Gordon. Batman. Keaton fills him in on the plan, and all they're looking for now is the perfect subject to give up all human emotion. Hello? Wow. 
that would have been really surprising and effective if we didn't see them plant the bomb there earlier. Takes away a little bit from the shock, doesn't it? Why don't you just start off the sixth sense with Haley Joe Osmond saying, Hi, Deadhead! What the fuck? As you can see, Murphy's lost two limbs, has burns all over his body, but somehow his face actually looks better than before the accident. Damn, I wish my car would blow up so I could clear out my pores. What kind of suit is this? It, it's you. They put him in his robo body, but he doesn't react well to it. I need to get out of this thing. What did you do to me? What have you done to me? Clearly, we picked the right test subject. To be fair, who'd have thought he had a personality to wake? No! Let it run! Let it run! What scientific theory backs that dumb move? Let him run! Let him run! Let him roam through our highly expensive equipment in an unstoppable killer suit immediately after choking me. I'm sure the little scamp will tucker himself out. Ah, this is where they make those Japanese RoboCop commercials. Oh, what the hell fried the chicken? <laughs> Fear not, though. The good doctor has a foolproof way to prevent this from going any further. Please stop. Stay where you are. And, and we'll come and pick you up. Alex, don't make me say please. Do I have to count to 22,482? Oh, if only there was a way to shut him down. <laughs> what the mountain of dicks? Robocrop. This time, it's really hard to make a joke about this one. Silverhawks. To the movie's credit, we do get the only nightmarish moment I could see being in the original when they show how much of his human body is actually left. Holy Christ, there's nothing left. Your body may have gone, but you're still here. You're still the same boring dumbass you always were. You're in control. Then I want to die. What, what do I say to your wife? What does she say to your son? I died. I guess Murphy's kind of a dick in this version. I mean, God, so much of the original was him trying to remember and reconnect with his family. But here? Just tell him I die. No more parent-teacher conferences, am I right? I guess the idea is his family meant so much he couldn't stand the idea of them seeing him like that, but A, because it was so lifeless, we never really got an idea of what his family life was like. B, if y'all love each other, you should be happy to see one another no matter what the circumstance. And C, the circumstance is kind of friggin' awesome. You have a bulletproof body, your kid will always have a giant action figure to play with, and if they did their job right, so will your wife. That seems like more pros than cons. <sighs> it's so good to finally see you. Robocall. This time, there's a family plan. We're gonna get through this, baby. We're gonna make it like it was. You know, can you really take this scene that seriously with that kid's picture there? Of all the ones to pick in a dramatic moment, that's the one you went with? He's looking at him like, Robocop, you cray cray! He looks like he should have meme text under him. I always sent you depressants. Let's give them a nice treat. Hook him up with that TX crumpet from Terminator 3. If I only had a heart. They test him in a simulation to see how he handles a crime scene compared to a robot. And I do give credit, I feel like the original director Verhoeven would have played the Tin Man song here too. But I think we all know he used this line differently. 5.6 seconds behind scenario failure. I wouldn't buy that for a dollar. Oh, piss off! Hey, you want a side-by-side -side comparison? Let's try that scene. Which would you rather see the rest of? Can I have you both? <laughs> sure! <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Wouldn't buy that for a dollar. Coincidentally, neither would Best Buy. Murphy decides to search the internet, so he uses Bing. <laughs> I take it back. This movie has a better sense of humor than I thought. <laughs> to find out more about the people who did this to him. Detective Murphy was simply overzealous, okay? We have absolutely no evidence linking Balan to the attempt in his life. You know, why are they letting him search for stuff that could upset him? You saw what the mere act of waking him did! How is this gonna balance out? It's about as consistent as the sunlight in that back window! That son is not a cooperative actor! Keaton sees RoboCop's delays in the side-by-side -side comparison and says exactly what the makers of Fallout 76 said while in development. You and I have got a release date. We've got to make it, okay? So I don't care how you do it. I'm asking you, come on, can you help me? Get it fixed! I don't care how you do it, just go do it! A moment of silence for those who pre-ordered that. Suckers! So they make some literal mental notes. Okay. I'm gonna put you to sleep now, Alex. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I was gonna ask why you didn't do that before. Ow! I'm gonna fix him. And he won't know the difference. Rated PG-13. 
And so Alien vs. Predator, The Dark Knight, The Last Crusade, Drag Me to Hell. Ratings are a joke! It really put the fear of God into the prisoners. Let's go with black. It's because you're Batman, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because I'm Batman. So they paint him black, which is a shame because aside from the visor that looks like a Darkwing Duck henchman, the suit actually looked pretty good. But now it just looks like Christopher Nolan directing The Tick. It's just bland and forgettable. They finally put him to the test against both robots and people trying to take him down. My god, is this that thing the other Robocop movies called action? But even this seems a little off though when you hear the musical choice. Wow. What the hell kind of selection is that? Yolo Cop, this time, it's... In the middle of this simulation, they drop an interesting concept. The system releases signals into Alex's brain, making him think he's doing what our computers are actually doing. I mean, Alex believes right now he is in control. But he's not. It, it's the illusion of free will. Like you think, if you don't go see this film, they're gonna start making original movies again, but... <laughs> He passes the test with flying colors, that is, if this movie had any other colors apart from brown, and he finally decides he's ready to see his family. Have you heard the Robo News? Omnicorp saves. <laughs> I was gonna ask if you were Sarah Connor, but I thought that one was funnier. Seriously, I missed you. You know, I missed you, buddy. Me too. Please stop, the rush of emotion is overwhelming. Saved all the Red Wings games on my computer. You did? Ah! What the hell is that? Oh, it's a smile. Don't fly off the handle like that, buddy. Keep it together. I heard you went home already. I'm sorry, Alex. Oh, yeah, I forgot. He had a partner. Remember what a big role the partner played in the first one? One of the big connections back to his personality, his soul, his work, his humanity. Now here, it's just a couple of lines, like... At least I know you're the right color now. You look like the Mega Man version of Get Out. So the big premiere day arrives, and only now do they decide to do this procedure that could screw everything up. I think it's gonna screw everything up. We're gonna upload the entire DPD database into your brain. What is this? That's his own crime scene. Alex! The system is crashing, Doctor. Alex, can you hear me? Weird! He's going to pieces while watching himself literally go to pieces? I'm so glad we showed him this before he went public. His mind is out of control, so they decide to take out his emotions to pretty much make him like the original RoboCop. I feel fine, Dr. Norton. Hi, Dad. Dad? So, yeah, all those cool scenarios that could have been played out figuring out who's making the choices, man or machine? Recycle bin that shit! It's just a machine now! Christ, why didn't you just start off with that like in the original? If you're not gonna do anything with this concept! His emotional journey wasn't that interesting because, you know, you need emotion. And now there's no question whether or not it's the man or the machine making the choices, we just know it's the machine. Except for the obvious stuff we know is coming where the human part is gonna take control again. How much more interesting would it be if, like, in this scene from the original, you had the question, was that the coldness of the machine or the coldness of the human? You don't really know, it's kind of up for you to decide. But the first film didn't introduce that option. This one did, and they're not doing anything with it. Damn it, this could have been an interesting story about choice. A Detroit becoming Robocop, if you will. But it's all thrown out for a simplified version of the original, where he just talks like a robot and captures criminals. Thomas King, you're under arrest. In fact, he even captures a rapist at the premiere because he recognized him from the police files. Here he is, just steps away from two of Detroit's finest. You know, that's another thing. The commentary in this sucks, too. In the other film, the environment is insane and rotten and greedy, and we see it through all these newscasters. It's like a cinematic version of the media from Dark Knight Returns. But here, it's just one guy. One guy, that's not world building, that's just one guy. That's like saying we know what the world is like by only listening to Bill Maher. Ooh, I didn't know the world didn't give a shit about Stan Lee. Good thing we had this totally balanced source to go off of. Don't you see? It's a satire of extreme points of view, like CNN, MSNBC, or the Disney Channel. Then why don't you have more than one point of view? 
How much more interesting would this film be if it incorporated new developments, like social media, message boards, phone apps? In the over 27 years since the last one came out, you could have taken this in so many different directions. But somehow, you actually do less than what the original film did. Well, what would they say? Hey, why did that criminal on the run show up to an event filled with cops? That's a good question! Why did he show up to an event filled with cops? Look, a thing I'm pointing at! Where? Damn it! It's okay. He's not smart enough to realize he should have ran away. Go! Oh. They say you can't teach an old Doug new tricks. Well, as a Doug in my late 30s, I take offense at that. I can teach myself lots of new tricks. For example, I just taught myself how to play the guitar. No, I... Hold on. It, it's a... I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, it is difficult to teach an old Doug new tricks, but with Skillshare, it's not as difficult. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Whether you want to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. If you do premium membership, you get unlimited access. So you can join the classes and communities that are right for you and your new year goals. There's a ton of software I never knew how to use, but now I can because of this site. So I can edit faster, draw faster, everything is more efficient. And yes, they even have guitar classes. Though I may want to give up on that one. Skillshare is also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And the first 500 of my subscribers to use the link in the description will get a two-month free trial. That's right, a two-month free trial. Just click on the link below to get started. So join the over 7 million creators out there that are learning with Skillshare. It's a new year, so might as well start it off learning new things. Click on the link below to get your two-month free trial today. Skillshare. So much to learn, so much time. So just a mere hour and 10 minutes in, Robocop finally takes to the streets to fight some criminals. You know, I gotta hand it to you, movie. The crime-fighting scenes actually aren't that bad. It's shot nice, it looks cool, and it's cleverly done. Thank you. I know it must have been hard for you to like something. I especially like that bike he's riding. Did Omnicorp give him that? Actually, that's his penis. Oh. It's as the saying goes, once you go black, you will probably be injured because there's giant wheels on you. I was unaware of that version, thank you. N.P. Murphy's wife tries to talk with him, but the robotic side takes control. Yeah, I think. Again, it's hard to tell sometimes. Clara, please stand aside. You need to speak to your son. Right now, I see three crimes in progress. Ow. Lazy writing, dull directing, and stilted acting. I'll admit that last one was me. But he decides to go to his old home to figure out if he can solve the mystery of the bomb. Oh, hell, I already solved that. Lazy writing, dull directing, and stilted acting. <laughs> Emo cop. This time. You just... Don't get it! Man, I even blow up boring. He's undoing what we did to him. How is that even possible? I haven't the faintest idea. The script's too trite to go into it, so we'll just say... love. His mission is now clear as he sets out for revenge. I hope I can beat my high score! Yeah, at this point all you can think about is how awesome this would be if it was a game. Actually, yeah, it would be. No, I'm serious, if this was an updated RoboCop game in 2014 and it was about choice as well as action, no joke, this would probably be a much better product. Imagine this scene where he finds out his own unit caused the car bomb. As a movie, it's nothing, but how much more shocking would it be if it happened to you in a game? You figured it out for yourself and you have a choice what to do about it. You tipped him off today. Come on, man. Don't you tried to this. kill me twice. Confess. 
now, in front of everyone. But it's not a game, it's just a dumb movie, so they shut him down and make Keaton the easy bad guy. Whoa, didn't see that coming. What's bigger than a hero? I don't know, I don't have a sandwich chart in front of me. Dead hero. Now nah, the audience response to this disagrees. So Keaton asked the good doctor to kill the fallen Robocop. I want full funding. Ten years. New staff. All my own people. Deal. Oh, yeah, they're really gonna make old men the bad guy. Hey, on top of that, I hear this guy has it in for Pinocchio. What a shock, Oldman frees Murphy, but Keaton tells his wife that he's dead. He's had a psychotic break. He killed an unarmed colleague. We did everything. Everything. You know, I can see why he was Birdman and Vulture. His movements are very foul-like. He's had a psychotic break. He killed an unarmed colleague. We did everything. Everything. We could, but the doctors couldn't save him. We're going to be making the announcement shortly. Robocop. This time. It was just too good not to use again. She believes him, though, as he gets ready to announce it to the news. Look at this city. So beautiful. I have very sad news. Alex Murphy passed away just hours ago. Who the hell starts off a news announcement like that? I don't care what you're announcing. That's just weird. Imagine if I was like... Look at this town. So grand. So open. So unassuming. I have some sad, tragic news. The IHOP down the street closed. Oh no, pancakes! Oh! Robocop bursts into Omnicorp to discover, oh yeah, those things were in the movie too. Frank, no, he wants us to do this. Damn it, Frank, you're off the Christmas card list. I guess that is a more impressive takedown than stairs. What was that? Robocop makes it to the top of the building where his wife and kid are. But he's programmed not to kill Keaton. If you go against the program, the entire system shuts down. So. You, you don't even have a warrant. Nah, I'm sorry, I can't hear anything over that intense Detroit wind. Being so high up on a building, it's just so loud and blowing everyone's hair around. Who am I kidding? I wish I couldn't hear it so I didn't have to listen to callbacks like this. Because I'm the only one with the technology to keep you alive. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Does it even make sense in this one? If I'm dead or alive, you're coming with me? Is my corpse gonna arrest you? But Keaton isn't done, well, Keatoning. If I wanted to, I could have killed you a long time ago. I just aimed this right at your head and blow it off. I mean, if I wanted to, I could just aim this at your little family, and I could just kill them too. You know, it's kind of like a male Ellen thing, you know, just with little spurts and hands and just saying what's obviously going on with these little spurts and hands and just saying what's obviously going on with these little spurts and hands. <laughs> oh, now I'm shot, just gonna lay here on the ground on anticlimactic. At least my arms are the same size. What the hell was that? You know, Keaton's character really was so odd and eccentric. Where do you think a guy like that goes when he dies? Well, looks like I'm next. Good thing, too. I gotta do a photo shoot for GQ in about an hour and a half. <sighs> Murphy, of course, ends up surviving, and they even give him back his old color suit. Oh, hey, better close that door so we don't get any accidental emotion in this. Oh, come on, I was just kidding. They're really doing that? You're not even gonna show a hug? Emotions! It can be a thing! It ends with the law being changed about machines, which ignites Nick Furious anger. The fact that this mother f is not serving- Oh bullshit, it's PG-13! You can get one F-bomb! You took away Samuel Jackson's one F-bomb! You know the real nightmarish future is the one that has him talking like this! I have had it with these monkey-fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday play! PG-13 Robocop! So, okay, this is not a good remake or reboot, but I'd be lying if I said it was as bad as I thought it would be. The supporting cast is mostly good, the ideas are interesting starts, and it made me realize this could be taken in different directions. Hell, it could even kind of start in a different direction by showing Murphy's emotional side early. But the emotional stuff is just not well done. This movie either needed a lot more over-the-top insanity to top the original, a lot more hard to make it more emotional, and or just follow through with its ideas. As is, it's just another remake that's already being forgotten. And it's a shame, because I see now it could have been something really cool if there was just a touch more creative cooperation. 
In the end, it's just a robo mess. Now, if you'll excuse us, we're gonna try and figure out another clumsy money-making scheme. So, I guess I am totally useless. Surely there must be something I can do to prove my worth. I know, why don't I find Malcolm? He has been gone for some time, hasn't he? <laughs> oh, RoboCop movie, I thought you understood. You are Malcolm. What? Yeah, he was mailed to us in several different parts, so we figured instead of putting him back together again, we'll make him into something new. Wait, you brought me back to life as a RoboCop movie? Don't act like you haven't tried that. Nobody has tried that. And since you didn't make back your money, I suppose we can give you back your memory and put you back together the way you were. Will I remember any of this? Do you remember any of the RoboCop reboot? We just reviewed it. And? I can't remember a thing. Sounds about right. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it! Because who the hell remembers the RoboCop reboot? Planes 3. Was there a Planes 2? What the fuck is Planes? That's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing the Fistula Foundation. Fistula is a disease in many developing countries that affects pregnant women. Sadly, in many countries, these women are outcasts and shamed by their society, but the Fistula Foundation can help. They believe no woman should endure a life of misery and isolation simply for trying to bring a child into the world. That's why they're dedicated to ending the suffering caused by this, as it's an injury that can be treated through surgery. Through their generous donors, they provide human and financial resources that enable as many women as possible to receive the treatment they need. Every site they fund is coordinated and staffed by local nurses and trained doctors who understand the community and how to provide the best care possible to the women they treat. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see all the women that have been held by this organization and all the good people who have helped give them their lives back. Click on the link and see what you can do to help these women live their normal lives. <laughs>